uh, my uh, third lecture uh, on multiple linear regression. Uh, today we will consider uh, one example and uh, this example uh, will enable us to illustrate the, uh, the theoretical concepts uh, we, uh, we mentioned in the last uh, two classes. Uh, well, uh, in, in last two classes we have uh, learned uh, you know how to, uh, how to fit uh, a multiple linear regression model and uh, when uh, the you know when the model has uh, been fitted or has been constructed uh, uh, we are, i mean next uh, job is to you know uh, test the statistical significance of the uh, fitted model and uh, we know uh, how to test uh, the significance uh, of the uh, fitted model uh, using the global test and also uh, using the partial test and also we learned uh, you no know, extra uh, sum of square technique to test uh, uh, whether uh, to test the um, uh, test uh, for uh, several variable uh, several regression uh, parameters being zero well so we consider uh, the data uh, in the following table here uh, you have uh, two regressor variable uh, x1 and x2 and uh, one response variable uh, y and uh, here uh, is the observation corresponds to uh, x1, x2 and uh, the response variable y. So, this one is the basically you know this is the first uh, observation on uh, regressor 1, this is the first observation on regressor 2 and this is the first observation on the response variable y. Well, so what is the first requirement is that uh, using least square method estimates the parameters betas in the model. So, the model here is you know y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus x 7. So, we have to estimate uh, the unknown parameters beta naught, beta 1 and uh, beta 2. Well, so, uh, first we construct the following matrices, uh, matrix y which is you know basically the uh, matrix of observations. So, this is 6, 8, 1, 0, 5, 3, 2, minus 4, 10, minus 3, 5. So, this is the vector of observation and it is a one 11 cross 1 vector because we have uh, 11 observations here. Now, we will construct the matrix x, this x is equal to 1, 1, 8, 1, 4, 2. So, this column is corresponds to the regressor x 1, this, this one is corresponds to the regressor x 2 and this way you know 1, 9, minus 8, 1, 
11 minus 10 this way we go up to 1 6 minus 4. Okay, so, this one is a 3 cross 11 matrix okay. and the next one is the beta vector which is basically the vector of uh, parameters. This consists of beta naught, beta 1, beta 2. So, it is a 3 cross it is a 3 cross 1 vector and also we define you know uh, epsilon, epsilon is a uh, 11 cross 1 vector uh, which one is you know uh, this is uh, the vector of uh, errors. Okay, so the model now can be written in the matrix form like y equal to x beta plus epsilon. Well, and we need to estimate the unknown parameters using least square method. Well, so LS estimates of beta naught, beta 1 and beta 2 are beta hat which is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y. So, this one is you know 1 1 8 1 4 2 1 6 minus 4 this one my x prime and x is 1 1 8 1 4 2 1 6 minus 4. Okay. So, x prime x inverse x prime y. So, 1 1 8 1 4 2 1 6 minus 4 this is x prime and y is 6 8 up to 5 right. So, see you know this one is uh, x is a 3 cross 11 matrix, x prime is 11 cross 3 matrix and this one is x prime. So, this is 3 cross 3 by 11 matrix and this one is you know 11 cross 1 matrix. Well, so this one is you know uh, you can check that x prime x is equal to 11 66 minus 22 5 0 6 minus 3 4 6 4 8 4 and it is a symmetric matrix. Okay. So, this is my x prime x. So, x prime x inverse and x prime y is 33 85 
142. So, you can check that. Well, now the inverse of this matrix is equal to uh, 4.3705 minus 0 0.8 9 minus 0 0.4086. Well, so this inverse is also of course, it is a symmetric matrix. So, this is the inverse of x prime x uh, into into x prime y which is equal to 33, 85, 142. Okay. So, what we got is that uh, you can check that this is equal to 14 minus 2 minus how. So, beta naught hat is equal to 14, beta 1 hat is equal to minus 2 and beta 2 hat is equal to minus 0 0.5. So, our fitted equation is, you know the fitted equation is y hat equal to 14 minus 2 x 1 minus x 2 by 2. Okay. Well, so uh, once we have the uh, fitted equation, you know next uh, uh, we need to check uh, how useful is this uh, fitted uh, equation. Uh, that means, uh, we need to uh, test the statistical significance of the fitted equation. Uh, basically, first we go for the global test, uh, we, which uh, test the hypothesis that uh, beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to 0. That means, there is no uh, linear relationship between the uh, response variable and the two regressor variable. And uh, we will use the you know uh, ANOVA approach uh, to uh, test the uh, statistical significance of the fitted equation. Uh, well, so for that we you know first we need to write uh, down the ANOVA table. Let me do that first. Well, so the next problem you know P2, I will say the second problem uh, you write out ANOVA table. Okay. Well, so what we need to uh, compute here is that we need to compute SS residual, SS total and then SS regression can be obtained from uh, these two. I mean SST minus SS residual is equal to SS regression. Now, in order to compute uh, you know SS residual, uh, first we need to compute the uh, residuals. Well, so the table for, we make a table, table of fitted values 
and uh, residuals. Uh, we know what is x 1, x 2, y, we know what is y hat, y hat is equal to 14 minus twice x 1 minus x 2 by 2, right. So, once we have y and y hat, we can compute E, where E is equal to the residual, you know, uh, this is equal to y minus y hat. Okay, let me just explain one two uh, observation. Like uh, first observation is one eight, and uh, the response value is six. Okay, so the corresponds to one and uh, eight. The fitted value of the response variable is equal to eight. You can check that. So, the first residual you know basically this is y 1 hat. So, E 1 is equal to y 1 minus y 1 hat y 1 equal to 6 and y 1 hat is equal to 8. So, the first residual is minus 2. Uh, similarly, 4 2 8 this is the second observation. So, y 2 hat is equal to 5 and your E 2 is equal to 8 minus 5 is equal to 3. So, this way you know you compute uh, all the residuals you will uh, you this way you can go up to E 11 because we have uh, 11 observations and, and once you have all the residuals uh, you know you can uh, you can compute uh, the SS residual now. Okay. So, SS residual is equal to summation E i square i is from 1 to 11, right. And uh, the value of this one you can check that this is 68. Next, we go for SS total. SS total is equal to summation y i minus y bar whole square, which is nothing but summation y i square minus n y bar square, right. Uh, this is this value is equal to 289, my n is 11 and uh, y bar is uh, 3, so 3 square equal to 9 and uh, SS total is equal to 190. And once I have the SS total and SS residual, I can compute SS regression, which is equal to SS total minus SS residual 190 minus 68 which is equal to 122, right. Now, I can have the ANOVA table. Source of Variation, you know, degree of freedom, SS, MS, and the F value. 
Well, the source of variation, uh, variation explained by the regression model. residual and the total variation. Well, so the degree of freedom of total SS total is uh, 10 because you know we have um, 11 observations and uh, 1 degree of freedom uh, we lose because of the constraint that uh, summation y i minus y bar is equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, SS total has degree of freedom 10, SS regression has degree of freedom 2 and the SS residual has degree of freedom 8. Uh, okay. Uh, let me explain here, you know SS regression uh, has degree of freedom age, uh, 8, which is uh, equal to 11 minus 3. Uh, we are losing the 3 degree of freedom because of the 3 constraint on, on residual, because the residual E i, it uh, satisfies, you know, 3 constraint. The first constraint is uh, summation E i equal to 0, the second constraint is summation E i x 1 equal to 0, that x 1 is the first regressor and the third constraint is summation E i x i 2 equal to 0. Well, so the residual has degree of freedom 8 and the regression has degree of freedom 2, we call it SS residual, uh, this is called uh, SS regression. Okay. So, the SS regression value is equal to 122, SS residual is equal to 68 and this one is 190 and the MS value is 61. So, 122 by 2 and MS residual is 68 by 8 which is equal to 8.5 and the F statistic value is equal to 7.17. Okay. So, this is the ANOVA table. Uh, next, uh, uh, we uh, move to the next problem which is uh, you know, problem 3, I mean requirement 3 you can say, uh, using you know alpha equal to 0 0.05, that means the level of significance is 0 0.05 to test uh, to determine if the overall regression is statistically So, uh, the meaning of this one is that whether the over, overall uh, regression is uh, statistically significant, that means uh, we need to go for the global test. Uh, that means we need to test the hypothesis that beta 1 equal to beta 2 uh, equal to 0, this is the null hypothesis against, against the uh, alternative hypothesis that, that H naught is not true. Okay. So, basically we need to test the hypothesis H naught beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to 0. Uh, this says that there is no linear relationship between y uh, and the regressors variable uh, against the alternative hypothesis h 1. It says that 
beta i not equal to 0 for at least 1 i. Okay. Uh, to test this hypothesis, we what we do is that we compare, you know, we have the f statistics value. So, we compare the f value, uh, observed value which is equal to 7.17. Uh, we compare this observed value with the f tabulated value f 0 0.05 and the degree of freedom is 2, 8. Uh, from the statistical table, you can check that this value is equal to 4.46. So, what we observed is that, you know, uh, the observed f value is greater than the tabulated value. Okay. So, we reject we reject the null hypothesis H naught, which says that beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to 0 and we use that means, the fitted equation is uh, significant and we use the fitted equation. y equal to 14 minus 2 uh, x 1 minus x 2 by 2. Well, so uh, what uh, the result of this test is that the global test, it says that the uh, fitted equation is uh, statistically uh, significant. That means, there is uh, you know a linear relationship between uh, y and uh, any at least uh, one of the response uh, one of the regressive variable well so next uh, requirement or uh, you know problem 4 i should i say uh, you calculate calculate r square that is the you know coefficient of determination. Uh, this is you know basically r square is equal to S S regression by S S total. Well, our S S regression value is equal to one twenty two, and S S total is. 190. So, this is uh, this r square is uh, one parameter which uh, measure you know sort of the performance of the fitted equation. Uh, it measures the proportion of variability in y about y bar that is explained by the fitted equation. Well, so the proportion here is uh, 122 by 190, which is equal to 64.21 percent, which is not that good. You know, that means that 64 percent of the total variability in the in the response variable has been explained by the two regressor variable. So. Uh, it is not that you know not uh, that good. Well, uh, so next we move to the next problem. So, problem 5, uh, it says that you know you uh, calculate the estimated variance of beta hat. Okay. Uh, 
what we know is that you know beta hat is an unbiased estimator of beta. We know that expected value of beta hat is equal to beta and also we know that the variance of beta hat is equal to sigma square x prime x inverse. Well, and uh, what we want is that we want uh, estimated value of this variance. Well, so here uh, to estimate this uh, variance of beta hat, only you know sigma square is not known. So, and also we know that that MS MS residual is an uh, unbiased estimated of sigma square. So, basically, we'll be uh, replacing sigma square by uh, MS residual. Uh, well, uh, so here I can write uh, you know variance of beta hat or the estimate of this one is equal to MS residual into uh, x prime x inverse which is nothing but uh, 8.5 is the MS residual 8.5 into uh, this matrix x prime x inverse which is equal to 4.3705 minus 0 0.8 9 minus 0 0.4086 right uh, well now uh, estimated variance of beta 1 beta 1 hat is equal to m s residual x prime x inverse the one one th element the, you know i have used uh, the notation for the variance of beta j hat j j here so the meaning of this one is uh, i call this one as the 0 0 0th element uh, because this one is corresponds to beta not this one, this element is corresponds to this is a variance covariance matrix uh, for beta not hat beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat the variance of beta 1 hat is ms residual into the 1 1th element of this matrix. So, this one is nothing but 8.5 into 0 0.1690 which is equal to 1.4365. Similarly, uh, the estimated variance of beta 2 hat is equal to uh, 8.5 into uh, x prime x inverse the 2 to 8th element which is nothing but 8.5 into 0 0.04 2 2 which is equal to 0 0.3587 okay well so uh, next uh, problem is uh, p6 uh, it says that uh, 
what does x2 contributes contribute given that given that x1 is already in the regression model okay uh, well so it basically says you know the contribution of the second regressor that is x2 in the page in the presence of the first regressor in the model. Uh, you know if you can recall the partial test, uh, partial so basically here we have to test that, uh, test the null hypothesis that whether beta 2 equal to 0 uh, against the alternative hypothesis that beta 2 is not equal to 0. Well, so um, uh, the meaning of this hypothesis is that. Uh, what is the contribution of the second regressor x2 in the presence of the first regressor x1 in the model. So, the hypothesis to test this is beta 2 equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis h1 which says that beta 2 is not equal to 0. And we know that the test statistic to test this hypothesis is uh, T which is equal to beta 2 by M s residual x prime x inverse 2 to 8 element. Now, you know the meaning of this one. Okay. So, this is basically the variance of beta 2 uh, estimate of the variance of beta 2. Okay, and uh, this quantity is equal to minus 0 0.5 by just now you have calculated this one, this is 0 0.3587. Okay, so this is going to be minus 0. 8348. Okay. Now, uh, here t follows t distribution with degree of freedom 8. So, you find out the tabulated value of t 0 0.025, it is a two sided test with degree of freedom 8. This value is equal to 2.0. 306, which is so the observed value, the abs, uh, mod of the observed value is not greater than uh, the tabulated value. So, the conclusion is that uh, we, we accept, we accept H naught, which says that beta 2 equal to 0. So, the meaning of uh, you know uh, what we concluded is that x 2 does not have any contribution in the regression model in the presence of x 1. So, let me uh, test the other thing also you know uh, what does uh, uh, x 1 contributes uh, in the presence of x 2 in the model. So, for that uh, I need to test. Uh, similarly, I need to test H naught, uh, which says that beta 1 equal to 0 against H 1 that beta 1 is not equal to 0. And the test statistic for this one is say T, which is equal to beta 1 hat by M s residual x prime x inverse 1 1 at element. Okay. 
this is equal to minus 2 by by 1.4365 which is going to 1.668 and again you know this t this t is not greater than or equal to t tabulated value t 0 0.02 0 0.0258 which is equal to 2.306 okay so the conclusion here is that we again we accept we accept h not uh, that beta 1 equal to 0 that means you know uh, the conclusion of this partial test says that there is uh, that x 1 is not significant or x 1 does not have significant contribution to the model in the presence of x 2 and also uh, the first partial test that is beta 2 equal to 0 that also is accepted. So, the conclusions, uh, conclusion of the other partial test says that uh, x 2 is also not significant in the presence of x 1 in the model. Uh, so, this is you know uh, whereas, the global uh, test says that that uh, x 1 x, x 2 uh, is significant that means, the model is significant, but individually uh, x 1 is not significant in the presence of x 2 and similarly x 2 is not significant in the presence of x 1. So, this is one a nice example you know uh, global test is reject you know global test says that x 1 x 2 are significant to explain the variability in y whether whereas, the partial on the other hand the partial test says that neither x 1 is significant in the presence of x 2 uh, nor x 2 is significant in the presence of x 1. So, here you know this example explain the problem of multi collinearity uh, in the regressor variable. So, anyway I will be going to talk about multi collinearity later on. Uh, so, this is the result of the partial test. Okay. So, what I want to do next is that uh, I want to test uh, how useful you know problem 8, uh, how useful is the regression using x 1 alone. That means, if you uh, only consider uh, x 1 in the model, uh, then uh, how much of the variability in y is explained by only x 1 that is what uh, we, we want to check. Uh, so, what I am doing is that I am, I am just removing the uh, second variable x 2, uh, I will be only talking about x 1 and y that means, uh, I have the observation like 1, 6, 4, 8, 6, 5 okay. and I want to fit a uh, simple linear regression between y and x 1. Uh, you can check that you know you, you know how to fit simple linear regression model. So, you can check that y is equal to the fitted model is y equal to 9.162 minus 1.027 x 1. Okay. So, once you have this fitted model you can compute you know y hat you can compute the residual. For example, uh, y 1 hat is equal to 8.135 and then E 1 is equal to minus 2.135 uh, 
similarly, uh, for the second observation it is 5.054 and the E 2 is 2.946. So, you do it for all the observations and you compute S s residual which is equal to summation E i square 1 to 11 which is equal to 74 and SST is same, SST is equal to 190 and uh, SS, SS regression is then equal to 116. Okay. Now, uh, ANOVA table ANOVA table source of source of variation degree of freedom SS MS and the F statistics. So, the regression residual So, degree of freedom here for total degree of freedom is of course, strain regression has degree of freedom 1 and residual has degree of freedom 9. Okay, I hope you understood uh, why it is 9. Uh, SS regression is is 116, residual is 74, total is 190. So, MS is 116 uh, and, uh, and MS residual is equal to 8.2 and the F value is 14.2. Now, you check uh, you know here this f follows f distribution with degree of freedom 1 and 9. So, you find out the value of f 0 5 1 9 uh, from the table it is equal to 5.12. So, the observed value of f is greater than the tabulated value which is equal to 5.12. That means, you know the regression uh, the fitted model is uh, the fitted model is significant. And also one more thing to observe here, you know here uh, before this uh, SS regression was 122 and uh, now the SS regression, I mean the SS regression involving uh, two, regress, uh, two regressors was 122 and the SS regression involving only one regressor is uh, 116. So, uh, perhaps you know X 1 uh, is more capable to explain the variability in in y compared to x 2, because you know out of 122 uh, which was the S s regression before involving the two regressors x 1 and x 2. Now, if you keep only one regressor in the model say x 1, then it is explaining you know uh, almost the same. Well, uh, now one more uh, thing I want to discuss here is that uh, let me define one thing S s residual p. So, this the meaning of this one is that this is the residual sum of square when there are p minus 1 regressor in the model. And of course, I hope you know that this S s residual involving p minus 1 regressors in the model, uh, this decreases 
this decreases as p increases. Okay. So, if you involve more regressor in the in the model, then SS residual uh, decreases. Well, but this is not true uh, for uh, MS residual. MS residual is equal to SS residual by n minus p. This may increase as p increases. You know, uh, why it is so? Just uh, you considered the previous example, there you know S S residual initially it was 68, when we had both the regressor x 1 and x 2 in the model. So, I will say this is S S residual for the full model and this one is less than the S S residual. for the restricted model. Restricted model I means uh, the model uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon. Okay. So, for this model also we have fitted this model and we check that the SS residual for this one is equal to 74. Right. So, this one has more regressor that is why the SS residual is less compared to this model. This model has only one regressor, this model has the full model has two regressors. Now, you compute the MS residual, MS residual for the full model that means two regressors okay, is equal to 68 by degree of freedom is 8 which is equal to 8.5 and for this restricted model you compute m s residual for the restricted model which is equal to 74 by 9 which is equal to 8.2. So, the m s residual for the full model is greater than the m s residual for the restricted model. So, this explains you know I said that S S residual always decreases as P increases, but the same is not true uh, for M S residual. The reason is here uh, you know the increase in M S residual occurs when the reduction in you know if you increase one more variable in the model of course, SS residual decreases, but the reduction in SS residual here uh, for I mean uh, for adding one more regressor in the model is not sufficient to, con to compensate the loss of one degree of freedom in the denominator. So, here uh, if you add one more regressor in the model, this one is model involving one regressor x 1 only, this one is the model involving two regressors x 1 and x 2, uh, but the reduction in S S residual is not enough to compensate you know the loss of one degree of freedom in denominator. That is why the M S residual for the full model I mean the model involving more regressor is more than the M S 
residual in the restricted model. So, uh, this is uh, uh, one thing we are going to use later on like uh, MS residual as a par parameter to select uh, the best model. Uh, okay, we will learn uh, those things later on. Thank you for your attention.